So uh, you can see that this is a torturous aorta again. So an elderly gentleman, perhaps a little aneurysmal in the, in the midsection there. Uh, you can see that he's got two uh, renal arteries there, which are you know definitely atheromatous. They're probably three and a half millimeters each in diameter, so they're kind of lower end of where we'd normally consider uh, suitable. This, of course, is a is a, a non-magnified uh, aortogram. Uh, so, uh, of, of course, when we intubate the vessels and, and put the, these in mag, these, of course, will look, look bigger themselves. I don't know, are you there on your own, Colin? Have you got Andrew or the rest of the team there? Yeah, absolutely. We are all here. And uh, I think one point, if you have not done a, a, a CT, look very carefully because sometimes you may miss uh, some polar arteries that are big enough to deserve uh, uh, denervation and uh, then you ask yourself why the patient didn't respond uh, and uh, you will have your answer from uh, a subsequent uh, investigation like a CT on an MRI. So uh, that's also one of the reasons why we prefer to have, uh, to know roughly the anatomy in, uh, in before. Yeah, I mean, th that's, it's a, it's a good point, and, uh, and I know that, uh, that, that uh, different centers do different, different practice. It's just in part of this study we've got, we uh, effectively, because every patient is having an autogram on the table as part of the study, this is where we've chosen to do this, this filtering. I, I agree completely in, uh, with regards to smaller accessory vessels, and th there was that interesting uh, data which came out of the, uh, we presented at CRT recently, which showed that perhaps while some patients respond less well, is perhaps large accessory vessels which don't get uh, completely uh, treated and assessed. And uh, I know there are investigators in the US, uh, people like Rob Schwartz, who's a, a very big CT guy, as you know, and, he, and he's a big advocate of precisely what you say for that reason. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to just, I'm going to try and whiz through this case because we've, we're, we've got about half an hour in total before uh, before the end of this session. So I'm going to just push on uh, here and, and to do this, uh, by all means uh, interrupt and, and ask questions, but really just to give people a flavor of, of the, the simplicity uh, spiral catheter working in a normal clinical workflow in terms of how we can actually use this in a, in a kind of very straightforward and, and pragmatic and practical approach, both benefiting, of course, the clinical team and also the, uh, the patient as well. Go ahead. Okay. So, so we've given some heparin. I'm just going to intubate this vessel now just to inject for me now, Rash. Are you in? I've given some nitrates, as I said. I'm going to take a, an angiogram uh, image there. And then you can see, it like <laughs> often the case when you take uh, an angiogram picture, you can you see that you've been deceived from the initial aortogram. The vessel looks uh, a good uh, calibre. Uh, what we thought before was about three, three and a half millimetres, so it's ident uh, suitable for this procedure. Could you roadmap that for me, please? So this is the case you have to select uh, if you are a beginner. Easy to this, is a, this is a lovely case. Distance to where you can apply your, your uh, uh, ablation and very straight. Absolutely right. Well, let's, let's hope, we're not, hope we're not tempting fate. Uh, but uh, as you say, it's a nice straight vessel and uh, the rail went in easily. It was, you know, the, the other case technically uh, you know, had a few, a few challenges with regards to the uh, anatomy, which was re really good from a live case perspective. But... Uh, you know, this, this, as you say, from a beginner's perspective, is a, a much more ideal case. So we've got the the, the flex, uh, sorry, the, the spiral catheter out again. Uh, I'm just going to run through this and uh, and take you through how I would do this from a clinical perspective. Uh, Rash is connecting uh, that up to the, the console itself. I'm uh, attaching this to the uh, to the guide wire. So the guide wire again is going through the middle here. Uh, and now I've actually elected to go for a, uh, a choice wire again, uh, same as we, we, did, we ended up with in the last case, just really because I think, you know, we're all gaining experience here, and I think that in a, a, a limited experience you have at the moment, this certainly made that last case and facilitated it hugely, made it a, a lot easier. So hopefully we'll have uh, a real straight run through here, and this will be very, very simple. So thanks, Rush. 
That's super. So I'm just advancing this on now. That's super. That's how you fix the wireless finish. That's great. Super. So as you were saying earlier, Carl, I'm just being very, very careful to watch my distal wire position here. And uh, so the simplicity, is, you can see this time it's got out beautifully uh, smoothly. I'm going to advance to just by that bifurcation, and I'm just going to withdraw the, the wire, and you can see it's taken that, that nice shape. And uh, if we can just, we can see the uh, electrode impedance values there. Uh, and they're just going to come up on the screen now. That's great. So you can see, the, so interestingly, in this patient, we've got nice flat uh, readouts again. Uh, maybe the bottom one is a little bit of a movement with respiration, which you can see it's phasic and repeatable, but the, the values are slightly higher. It doesn't necessarily mean anything, but it does vary from patient to patient. So I'm going to go ahead now, Hydra, if you could go ahead and, and do this uh, ablation for me. So we've started the procedure. I've pre-medicated this gentleman. He's a, he's a larger gentleman, and he was not completely asleep with 2.5 midazolam. So I've given him 5 midazolam, and now he's had 5 morphine as well. So now he's very comfortable, and you can see he's completely flat from the procedure. So, so could we mag up on the uh, on the, the generator? That's super. So, Carly, you can see these numbers changing at your end? That's fantastic. I mean, that's... Uh I think it will be in, in the advertisement leaflet on the company tomorrow, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Perfect reduction of all four, <laughs> and super stable <laughs> temperature, 50 lines, 60, 61, all four. Is it true, or uh, is it, are you <laughs> making it up? <laughs> no, I can assure you it's true. <laughs> but uh, I don't think this gentleman's going to be running a marathon tomorrow. I think... Uh, Obviously, the follow-up period's about a year here, so we'll see how it goes. But certainly from a technical perspective, it's uh, it's very straightforward. So I've done four ablations here. Can I just do a floor acquisition here, please, Rich? It's all done. So I'm just going to, uh, just a little bit of contrast rush. Thank you. Document that position for us. So that's nice. And if we could just, can you roll back that for me, Richard? What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to bring this back. And, uh, and that's super, thank you. And... Uh, Little test there. So I'm going to do a couple more. So interesting. Now you can see when before the electrodes have been uh, turned off, you can see that uh, the machine itself, we go up to the generator, has uh, switched itself off. And this is a complete operator error on my part. Because you'll see if I advance the catheter back in a tiny bit here now, just out of the estimate of the guard, everything switches back on again. So. Uh, Hydrogen, I really need electrodes three and four for me. That's great. Better. So, very good. Hundred percent reproducible. Every time you switch off and you take take it into the catheter set, but you can see it's very straightforward, very easy, uh, and we've got a nice position here. We've got nice stable values of impedance. So, can we go to hydrogen? Thanks very much. So, so Carla, I know that you're, uh, you've done a lot of innovations at, at uh, your centre, and one of the things which we always uh, wish for is uh, a little bit of amusement between the patients. So I think this is a considerable improvement. Well, certainly, I think uh, for, from the perspective of uh, uh, you know the, the, the patient uh, uh, discomfort uh, is, uh, is is very important. Uh, might make uh, your um, social entertainment in the cathedral a little <laughs> bit less, <laughs> but <laughs> you don't have these uh, 15 minutes to speak. <laughs> so what's happening with two? It's uh, really a very low temperature rise, isn't it? It is, too. And, it, and it may be, there is a little bit of atherome as a complex there, so I, I may be just a mat, or maybe the contact's not quite as good. The starting impedance was very good, though. So uh, I'm not really going to worry about this. We already had, as you say, four textbook ablations distally. We've got a fifth and approximately now, and I, and I think we're very, I'm, I'm very comfortable here. I don't, I don't, are you, would you agree with that? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So I'm just going to uh, re-advance my wire now, and then we'll just do a very quick check angiogram uh, picture here. 
So I'll just straighten things off, pull everything back together, pull my wire back, and then that's back in the catheter. And let's just do a fluoro cord here. Okay, and inject this rush. Okay, there you go. So a little bit of dimpling, I think, but uh, again, the, the vessel looks you know, intact. Uh, there's no major spasm, uh, no significant problems that it. You feel comfortable with that? Well, that's uh, great. Uh, we, we have uh, an interesting question. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, you activated uh, the two most distal uh, electrodes. Yeah. Uh, and we were wondering whether keeping uh, all four electrodes uh, inside the artery, but activating the most proximal, the two most proximal, was better to have the spiral uh, shaping on uh, and, and adhering better to the vessel wall, and at the same time, you have more uh, purchase, so you have a more stable position uh, with your catheter within the renal artery. That, that's, that's quite a good advice to me. Uh, I think that's a very good advice. I think that's a, an excellent question. Um, uh, and whoever suggested that should maybe be up here doing the case. But I think it's a, it's a very good, a very good question, a very good point, and I think you're correct because I think whatever we do, we're, we're probably misshaping the spiral slightly by withdrawing it back into the catheter. So we'll we'll, we'll have a look at that with it when we go to the left side and see if, if that makes any uh, any difference by doing that. But again, this is a, a learning point, and you know most of us who have done this have done only a handful of cases in humans, and most of them been done in animals, and, and animals have got all very straight, healthy uh, arteries, because they're all young, healthy animals. So it's a very different experience for them. So, so Justin, even if the problem is interaction with uh, electrode four with the guiding catheter, if yeah. you have all four in, that'll provide such stability you can back your guiding catheter I, I, right out. I think you're right, Andrew, and my guiding catheter's in a reasonable amount though, isn't it? So we're probably going to, to pull that out as well. So it's a, a very, very, very good learning point. Richard, could we go to the, uh, can you show me the autogram, please, again? Looks uh, higher, isn't it? It is higher. I think you're right. I think. It, try that. Let's try that. That's it. I think we're there, aren't we? Yeah. There we go. Perfect. So let's do a fluoro cord, though, please, Rich. Thank you. Okay. Let's inject. Okay. So again, it's uh, hopefully a relatively straightforward vessel. There's a little bit of disease, I think, in the proximal to mid portion of that, that uh, vessel. I don't know what people think about that. Well, there is a difference in caliber, so certainly yeah. if you do a, a technique that shows the plaque as well, like a CT, you will see some probably calcium or a yeah. thicker wall in, in this part of the vessel that may explain some differences you find in uh, your impedance. And also maybe why is better since this uh, uh, distal area is long enough and straight, uh, maybe to start a little bit distal with your catheter, uh, isn't it? I, I think you're entirely right, Colin. This may be one of those cases where uh, we just do four, four denervations in the distal margin of the, of the vessel. Uh, I'm just the guardrail is not in very far, I'm just going to push it in a tiny bit further, again, respecting the vessel uh, and the kidney anatomy completely. And I think that's probably about right. A little test there from the rush. I think that's pretty perfect. So uh, the the training that I've been given here is essentially the, the distal most marker on the catheter. That's where you should position that just by the bifurcation. And then as you pull the stent out, the actual catheter springs back and it takes up uh, the intrinsic shape of the vessel. So let's stent out that. Let's take the wire out. And so I'm going to just take the wire back now. And you saw it just a little, little bit of movement there. And just another quick check just to see. And I think that looks pretty good. What does the board of the panel think now? Do you think I'm just overlapping with that side branch? Or do you think that looks good? Well, let's, let's do a fluoro acquisition here, please, Richard. Fluoro acquisition, thank you. Thank you. All right, it's probably okay. No, it seems uh, exactly it's one millimeter proximal. Yeah, it's, it seems good. So if, we could, so if you could just put the uh, impedance uh, generator chart on the screen. Thanks a lot. So, Carlo, you can, s you can see those n nice and clear there? Yeah, from 249 uh, for the most distal to 301 for the most proximal. And they all look nice and stable. So, so we'll kick off there and uh, we'll start our ablation. I'm just going to hold the catheter as I always do, just in case the patient becomes agitated. Uh, he, th this gentleman, as I said, ev everyone varies hugely. He's had the same regime and he's fast asleep and snoring and 
result absolutely nothing from the first series of operations. Our Polish colleague gave 15 milligram of morphine. Believe me, he was really fast asleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, I always remember one of the first cases I saw was horse fever to a case in Germany, and the patient was completely awake. And horse turned to him, didn't ask him if he had pain. He said, uh, "Sir, do you, f you don't feel pain, do you?" And the patient went, "No." So um, I think that's a difference in uh, in different countries, and, uh, and clearly horse had managed to uh, control his patient's emotions very well. But uh, so 57, 58, 56, 56, uh, good rise in temperatures, two of them are below 10%. Uh, the Faisal commented maybe it's not so important for this spiral catheter, I still have to understand why, but yeah. I think, I think we'll hear from yeah. the experts. I think that uh, I, I'm pretty happy that we had some, we had five good ablations on the on the right. We've got f four good ones here, and I, I don't really want to pull that too much into that that uh, the rest of the of that vessel more proximally. And so I think what I'll do, if it's okay with the panel, is pull this back, take a, an angiogram picture, and, and finish there. And I think that really what this illustrated is that you can do these cases now. Even in the context of a, uh, of a life case where we're chatting in a in a very very short time frame, I think it's 15 minutes or so to do this whole case. So I'm just going to pull this catheter back now. Everything's out. The, the denervation catheter, the wire's out. Uh, the, I'm taking the uh, short guiding catheter out now. We're going to, uh, next thing we'll do is just take a, a, a groin shot, which we routinely do uh, before uh, uh, putting in a, 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 an angiosil closure device. But um, I put, I'm sure you, you've seen enough of those. Uh, I'm sure you probably want to be pushing into to coffee soon, but uh, unless there's any other uh, burning questions. Well, I think you have uh, shown beautifully how quick this procedure can become with a spiral catheter. The big advantage this represents also for the patient comfort. And, uh, uh, well, uh, it was uh, in a way unexpected that it was so short because we all uh, didn't know enough about uh, these uh, uh, virtues of the spiral uh, uh, simplicity catheter. So thank you very much, Justin. Uh,